So earlier today, I received an email from one of my YouTube subscribers, Ash, asking if I could help him with his one-handed backhand. Well, Ash, let's do it. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to help Ash, on the left, one of my YouTube subscribers, improve his one-handed backhand by comparing his backhand to Stan Wawrinka and Denis Shapovalov. All right. Ash, thank you so much. Just going to run the video here just a little bit to let the viewers see your one-handed backhand. And you do some things well, but I want to just give you some really simple things that you can copy from Stan and from Dennis. And what I want to do is actually at the end here, get in front of the camera and show you me actually demonstrating these ideas. All right, so let's, let's look at this backhand right here. So I've got you next to Stan here, and I want to show you the way Stan gets his racket behind him. So he goes directly from the ready position immediately to getting the racket behind his head. You'll notice that when his racket is going back, it is not dipping down. What you're doing every time, Ash, is you drop your racket down, then you lift it up, and then you take it back. Watch your racket. Watch your racket go down. You can see your hand is down by your shorts. And then watch how your racket then goes up. Watch. It goes up, then it goes back. So on all of your backhands, and I'll kind of scoot because we're sort of near the end of this video, I want you to watch how you turn with your hand very low down by your pocket, then you lift your racket up. So there's always this upward lift because your racket's very low at the beginning. Watch Stan. He does not drop the racket down by his shorts where your hand is down by your pocket. His hand is not near his pocket. So when he takes the racket back, the racket head is always near his head. Your racket is kind of even with your bicep. Then you lift it up to the height that Stan has. So this is making you late whenever a ball comes fast and deep to you. So we want to keep the racket up when we take the racket back. And, and make sure you stay till the end. I'm going to demonstrate all this in front of the camera. So the first thing we got to do is we got to have a very smooth take back where the racket immediately gets behind the head and there's no dip down and then bringing it back up. The next idea is when the racket drops, it needs to drop with both hands. You watch this with all high-level players. They drop the racket down with both hands. You'll notice with your racket how the racket drops and you let go with your left hand as you're dropping the racket. So we don't want to drop the racket with just one hand. I know the backhand is one-handed, but, but the turn and the drop are actually two-handed. And you see this with the best players in the world. They take the racket back with two hands, and they drop the racket down with two hands. Really important to be able to finish correctly and be able to use that, that counterweight with the left arm going back. So when you drop your racket, you have already let go with your left hand. You'll notice where Stan's left hand is. His left hand is in front of his body. You'll notice where your left hand is. Your left hand is behind your body. That means you can no longer throw it behind you. It's already behind you. So what the best players in the world do is they actually bring their left hand forward in front of their left pocket. That's what then allows their left hand to go backward because it has a place to go. Your left hand is already behind you, and because of that, you won't be able to stay sideways. You won't be able to swing out towards your target. And I'm going to be showing you this with uh, Denis Shapovalov as well. The next thing I want to show you is that before you hit the ball, and this is on every single backhand you hit, on all of your backhands, Ash, your racket face is open. Before you hit the ball, your racket face is open. If you look at Stan, his racket face is closed. Closed simply means that the strings are tilted down toward the ground. Yours are tilted up toward the sky. So I'm not saying that your racket face has to be pointing directly toward the ground because that's not even what Stan is doing. I would say his racket face is closed I don't know, about 20 degrees, your racket face is open 20 degrees. What this causes as you get to contact, Ash, is you have to roll the racket over. And you can see when you're done here, your strings are pointing down. Now, I'm gonna actually going to show you here now Dennis because Dennis is actually going to be demonstrating the exact finish I want you to copy. Now, many players will argue, this is not Dennis Shapovalov. Dennis is left-handed, and you're right. He is left-handed, but I've reversed the video, and you can see that by the Indian Wells Welby's wall. This is reversed. I just reversed the video so that Denis Shapovalov is right-handed in this video. So you'll notice he takes the racket back, and the racket is at head level, and then watch how he drops the racket down with both hands. Notice 
his left hand right here, we can see it on the front side of his body. Remember, when you drop your racket down, you drop it down and you let go, and now your left hand is behind your body. Now, we are talking about closing the racket face with Stan. Dennis is demonstrating that exact same thing. Now, here is the finish that is going to make you so consistent. When pros finish in this way, and this is called the left side of the letter V, where you know I, I drew the letter V and he's got the left side of it. It's because before he hit the ball, his strings were facing down. And then after he hits the ball, he's not rolling his wrist. He's actually keeping the wrist angle intact. And now when he's done, his racket's actually facing slightly up. So his strings went from facing down prior to contact to facing up after contact. Yours are the reverse, Ash. Your strings prior to contact face up. And then when you're done they face down. That means you have a shorter contact zone. That means the length of time that you can hit the ball and the, and, and, and the ball goes in. Where Dennis is doing this, keeping a long contact zone, making it easy for him to make a great, consistent shot. Now, does Dennis always finish like this? Absolutely not. I would say that Dennis finishes like this less than 10% of the time. But because the other 10%, his racket's over here with his strings pointing down. But why is he finishing in this position with the left side of the letter V? Because this is an on-the-rise backhand. And even the pros, when they're in a difficult situation, will use the left side of the letter V in order to create massive control in a difficult situation. Here he's having to time an on-the-rise ball, so he doesn't want to flick his wrist. Notice his left hand goes backward. Watch his left hand go backward. So his left hand came forward in front of him, and now his left hand goes back. We could draw a straight line from his right hand to his left hand with the left side of the letter V. You can notice when you're done, strings are down, and I, you sent me a side view as well, and your body completely opens up to the court. Let me get to a ball that you open up a lot. Yeah, you're opening up there. Let's see it. <clears throat> There's one. See how you're opening up? It's almost like you're going to give the ball machine a hug. You're going to give your slinger bag a hug. Your arms are out. Dennis is keeping his chest to the side. That lengthens the contact zone, getting the racket to go out towards your target. And I decided to actually add Stefanos here. He's actually playing uh, Medvedev in this video. This video, by the way, is courtesy of Racket Comedy. Amazing content. So make sure that you are subscribed to Racket Comedy. I've got their link in the description below. But here is the turn. Look at him drop. Look where his left hand is. His left hand is on the front side of his body, so it kept his left hand on longer. Now watch the finish. This is a return of serve. This is exactly what I just showed you. Does he do this all the time? No. This left side of the letter V. Does Stefanos do this half the time? No, but they do it in situations where they need absolute precision. Down the line passing shots when the opponent's at the net, returning serve, um, on the rise. They will use less wrist on the backhand. Even the pros know that they need to alter their finish to gain control. This angle that he had prior to hitting the ball, we'll say right here. This angle that he had prior to hitting the ball, that angle shows up right here. He has not moved his wrist. Again, his strings are facing up to the right when he is done. All right, let me show you this in front of the camera. So I'm going to be using the Topspin Pro to demonstrate the backhand form that I want Ash to copy. This thing is an amazing product. It would mean the world to me if you went into the description below. I'll even pin it in the first comment and used my affiliate link to get this so that you can practice what you're learning on Two Minute Tennis on YouTube at home. So thank you so much for considering. All right, the take back. When you turn, Ash, you're always dropping your racket down and then lifting it up. You know, the, the shortest distance between two points is going to be a straight line. The pros don't have time to drop and then to go up. And your future self won't have time for that either because you're going to be playing people who hit harder, deeper, can really kick the ball uh, off the ground with spin. So don't drop the racket down and then lift it up. When you take it back, it's two heads are better than one. Take the racket back, keeping your racket head at your head height. And when you do this, we don't want the racket to be level to the ground. We want the racket perpendicular to the ground. So we want the racket to be very straight up and down when we take it back. You notice this with um, Vavrinka especially. I love how straight up and down his racket is when he takes it back. The next thing, Ash, when you drop your racket, drop it down with both hands. What I like to tell my students is touch the back of your left hand to the front of your left knee. 
So drop it down and actually touch with the racket in your left hand, touch your left knee. That gives you the idea that the racket is, or the take back is two-handed and the drop is two-handed. Now at this point, your racket face should be closed. The reason we want the racket face closed prior to contact ash is this is what helps get your racket square against the back of the ball. Look, this is where you make your money, right? So if you're hitting the ball like this, the ball goes out. If you're hitting the ball like this, the ball's gonna go in the net. We have a small acceptable range, right? Where we've gotta get the racket square against the back of the ball. Can it be open one degree? Sure. Can it be closed one degree? Sure, right? There is a range of acceptability, but you can't have the racket wide open or it's super closed. So when you close the racket face here, that's what gives you that square racket against the back of the ball. You'll remember, uh, I'll demonstrate it from this side. you remember that your racket was open and when the racket's open, it'll be wide open if you try to do the left side of the letter V. So you're actually turning the wrist and you're actually supinating, trying to get the racket face to be square against the back of the ball. Very difficult to time it when you do it that way. So that's why you notice your racket face is open prior to hitting and then your racket face is closed, strings pointing down after you hit. You're just trying to figure out how to get your racket square against the back of the ball. I'd rather you do it the way Shapovalov is doing it in the way you just saw with, um, with Dennis, where the racket face was closed prior to hitting and that made it super easy for the racket to be square against the back of the ball. So now that you've kept your racket up on the way back and you've dropped the racket down with both hands closed face, this is where you're gonna spin up the back of the ball and you can see the ball spinning with the Top Spin Pro, I'm gonna spin up the back of the ball and this is where my arms now go apart. You were letting go with your left hand. So your left hand had already, was already back and it's not a counterweight, it's just sitting there. So then that's what opened you up and now you're swinging to the right and you're not swinging towards your target. We wanna do what Shapo just did, where he finished and his arms go apart, it's like he's pinching his shoulder blades because his left hand was in front and now he can move his left hand back as he's hitting but he had the left side of the letter V. This is also called the archway where you could walk forward under your racket. When you keep your wrist angle intact and you don't cast the wrist, but you keep the wrist angle intact, it makes you super, super consistent. Now I've seen other videos and other coaches and they talk about using this movement, right? Look, in my experience, and they talk about it for, for speed and depth and, and, and pace on the ball. In my experience, people aren't struggling with hitting the ball hard enough. It's not like if you drive home and you're like, oh, I lost. It's not because you didn't hit the ball hard enough. It's because you were missing, right? When we're driving to the club or we're driving to the match, we're like, oh, I'm gonna kill the opponent. When we're driving home, we go, oh, I kept missing. Right? We gotta really understand why we're not playing the level we wanna play. And it's because we miss too many shots. It isn't because we don't hit the ball hard enough. So by keeping the wrist angle intact, it keeps your strings tracking out towards your target. And when you're done, you're gonna finish completely sideways. Don't face your target. If my target is this wall, I'm gonna be sideways to my target. Left arm is back, racket is up high and out in front of me. If somebody were standing to the right of me, I'm not gonna smack them with my racket. They're perfectly safe because I'm gonna be swinging up. So keep your racket up, Ash. Drop with both hands and try to get the left hand to get in front of your left knee. Racket face is closed. Then as you hit, keep your body sideways and the arms go apart. And when you're done, make sure that the racket is to the left of your hand so that you're not using your wrist. And then you go back to the ready position again. Ash, thank you so much for sending me that video of your backhand. If you watch this video and you're like, wait a minute, I want Ryan to help me with my game. Simply send me an email, ryan at twominutetennis.net and I might just choose you for an upcoming video. And as you know, if you have gotten a Topspin Pro in the past using my affiliate link, you absolutely will be chosen for an upcoming video post. So thank you so much, Ash. If you use what you learned in this video, there is no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. Ash, you got this.